Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I'm going to try to copy a Cezanne jacket. Okay, so for those of you who aren't familiar, Cezanne is a very popular French brand and they're very much into sustainability. Um, the clothes are beautiful, beautifully made and uh, pretty pricey, <laughs> which is not surprising and, uh, and I don't begrudge them that. I mean, beautifully made clothes should be pricey, right? But I, I don't have the uh, wherewithal to, um, you know, to buy Cezanne. Now, at some point, I would love a Cezanne piece, but it's not something that I'm gonna be buying very often. And um, anyway, I had the idea a while ago to make a chore coat. So chore jackets are really in right now. There's the Julia pattern from um, Jazz Ready to Sew. There's the jacket from um, Closet Case Patterns. I can't think off the top of my head what that one's called, but I'll put it in here. And then there's the free one from thefabricstore.com called the Paula. So initially I thought, okay, I'm gonna make the Paula. It's not warm enough yet for me to wear summer dresses. It's just gonna be an exercise in frustration. So why don't I make a jacket? Because the temperatures here in Spain right now, while they're warm in the afternoon, still cool in the morning, still cool in the evening, but my leather jacket I find is too warm and also my pink coat is now you know, pretty much going to be put away until fall. So something lighter though would be great. And a chore jacket in black denim, which is left over from my Aaron skirt, if you'll remember from the other day, I think could be really cute. Now I was watching a YouTuber and she had bought the Will jacket. She had bought it in uh, navy, in like a you know regular medium jean um, color. And I thought that's cute because it's a combination really between um, a jacket and a denim shirt. And I'll put in a picture, some pictures from the Cezanne website. Um, some of the details on this that I want to replicate are the angled pockets. So they seem to be at just, a, like just this much of an angle, not a huge angle. Um, and they do seem to be that I can just attach them into the front placket and the side placket. So I feel like that's something I can replicate. There is a back yoke and there is a double seam down the back and there are cuffs with a placket, okay? So those are some of the things. And also it's longer and kind of has a shirt tail front. I think it was 72 centimeters from shoulder to the end of the front. So how does that compare to the Paola pattern? Well, the Paola pattern is a little more boxy. It's not as long. It has a straight across hem and it does not have any, um, pocket or cuff and I think because the idea is that you can roll it up and and maybe make it a little more transitional get me a little further into the summer um, I think that would be really worth trying to replicate so also the Paola jacket does not have a back yoke um, does not have a seam down the back other than that it's similar like the the front placket is similar the shape of the shoulders is similar the collar is similar. So I do think it's a good place to start with. And on top of that, I've already printed it out and cut it. <laughs> so I'm gonna work with it no matter what. But I was thinking last night when I was planning this that I have this. So if you guys watched my last video, this is Patrones, which is the East, a Spanish pattern magazine. And you can see the green dot here. That's because this is from my library. Yes, my friends, my library that is two minutes walk away has Patrones and Berta at the library. So I can take out as many issues as I want and they have the patterns in there. Look, this hasn't even been separated yet. Yeah, so I've been flipping through a bunch of those and kind of cataloging which ones I might wanna make. So I remembered, it kind of went ding, ding, ding. I feel like there was a similar. So here is a shirt. And this very much, if you look at in the picture, it's being used as a jacket, right? It's very much this sort of overshirt, jackety type thing. Quite similar. Now, I have noticed that it doesn't have the rounded front. I'm gonna have to take a really close look at the photos on the Will one and see what that, that shirt front detail hem looks like and if I can or do want to replicate that. But it does have the cuffs and it does not have the back yoke, but it has the length and it has the cuffs. And I think those are the two things that the Paola mostly is missing. So I think what I'm gonna do is take out this pattern piece, find it, and not trace the whole thing, but maybe just figure out which size is similar and, and trace the bottom half for, um, for length and see if I can kind of approximate that. 
Okay, so I have no idea how this is gonna go. I literally just started this this morning, but I wanted to keep you updated and, oops, low battery, low battery, ah. <laughs> I wanted to keep you updated and yeah, I'm gonna see what I can come up with and maybe come up with something cute and it's a good challenge for me and we should challenge ourselves to learn new skills, right? Now with my buttonhole skills, <laughs> there's no stopping me, my friends. I am gonna conquer the sewing world. Okay, that's all for now. I'll talk to you soon, bye. Okay, I thought I'd show you guys. I don't know if you can see this. It's called sewingtranslator.com and it was started by Lisa Gibson of Liesl & Co, I believe. At least that's where I found it. And you can translate to different languages. So for instance, I wanted to know if that pattern piece that we were looking at is a placket. And sure enough, tapeta is placket. So this is going to come very much in handy as I continue sewing with Spanish patterns. Okay, so I traced the placket, which was easy. And now I'm just looking at the Paula as well as my Berta one. And if you'll remember, I said that the length of the coat of the Cezanne coat is 72 centimeters from shoulder to the end uh, to hem for a size small, which is about the size I would probably be. And this, as I measure it right now, is 68. So I've gotta add about another, well, four centimeters, which is about an inch and a half. Um, and I'll, I'll measure the front as well. So it might even be easier for me to just, rather than fool with another, pro, another pattern, I might just add the extra to the bottom and then be able to add that curve for the shirt hems. Because as I'm looking at it, the curves are pretty minimal. It's not like it's a full shirt hem. It more just kind of curves up to the middle of the seam and then back down again. And that might just be easiest to do by extending this pattern. The other thing I did is when I was um, looking at pictures online, I actually saw a picture of somebody in a will coat and I realized that I know her. <laughs> she's um, a fashion blogger from Hamilton, which is just outside of Toronto. And she does all sorts of stuff on Cezanne, which is how I initially found her. And so she and I, over the last couple of years, have chatted a fair bit. So I sent her a message on Instagram and I'm like, um, odd question, can you take a picture of your jacket for me inside out so I can see the construction? <laughs> Anyway, fingers crossed that she does it for me. Okay, so I just recorded about five or six minutes telling you all about my progress, and then it turns out that it wasn't recording. Don't you love it when that happens? <laughs> okay, so I just got back from Spanish class. I had my hour and a half Spanish class. Went to that, that was fun, and now I'm back and ready to work on the coat. Now, while I was out, I got a message from my friend Kate, and she said, sure, I'll take a picture of the inside of my jacket <laughs> for you. <laughs> Such a strange request, but she's very sweetly now she has three kids um one of whom is a baby so um you know i'm not expecting her to hop to it or anything like that but she said if i don't message it to her within or if i don't if she doesn't message it to me within a couple of hours to remind her and she'll do it so i'm really curious i don't even know if it's gonna provide any um any insight but i think it, i think it probably will i can't imagine that it's not going to help at all i'm having i'm having some broth i have broth almost every day i'm a broth girl Okay, so what have I done since I last saw you? So one thing I did was I took the, um, the this is the sleeve pattern from the Paula, and I matched it up against the Petrone's pattern sheet for that military style shirt thing. Um, and th it matched quite well. Now, of course, this is including seam allowances and the other one isn't, but I think as long as I add seam allowances to the cuff piece and the placket, it should be fine. So what I did was I did the markings that were on the Petrone's pattern for the placket. And so I will do that. So that should take care of the cuff. The only thing is that this sleeve is much longer than the other sleeve. And so I'm not sure if I should take a little off of it first. It might be really long with the, I'm not sure. I'm going to measure that. I'm going to measure that. The other thing I did was I hadn't cut the front piece yet. So I cut the front piece and then all I did was add that extra six centimeters plus two centimeters of seam allowance to the bottom. So I just cut it the same width as the small, but I did the length longer and then I added paper to the other one that I had already cut and did the same thing. And then I've cut the collar, the under collar, the 
back facing. Why is there back facing? Huh. I thought if you have an under collar, you don't need a back facing. But anyway, um, and the front facing. So I've got all that done. And now I'm going to look again at pictures of the will. I'm going to read through the whole um, tutorial of how to make the Paola on that website, uh, on the Fabric Store website, fabricstore.com. See, fabricstore.com. Anyway, I'm gonna put the link below. <laughs> um, so I'm going to read through that whole tutorial and then I'm going to go through in my mind step by step what I need to do differently in order to make this top jacket different. So one thing I need to do once I get the pictures from Kate is I'm going to round, round the bottom slightly of this to get that slight shirt tail look. And I'm gonna do some measuring and just, cause I, I tend to, you know, cut first, think later. <laughs> um, and while I have enough black denim, I don't have enough to cut two, top, two fronts and then have to cut them again cause I've cut them wrong. So I'm gonna take some time and really make sure that I'm, um, I'm on point and I know what I wanna do. And then, and then I'm gonna cut it. So I don't think I'll get sewing today, but you never know, I might get on a roll, we'll see. Anyway, I will keep you updated. Bye.